Today we're gonna see a couple of customers who had opportunities to stop an armed robbery. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Neil Widener. Today's video comes from Wichita Falls, Texas. Palm pepper spray is next generation OC spray. It's hot, hot at 1.4% major capsaicinoids and its modular design means you can customize it exactly to you. Three different setups, lots of different color combinations. You can make it exactly as you like. And the flip top safety prevents accidental discharges. It's 10 to 12 foot range and 25 half second blasts. Make sure that you can keep that long range eye poke at long range. I trust Palm OC and I recommend it for everyone for self-defense. Two customers and the clerk in this convenience store. The surveillance footage actually has audio. So let's listen in on what goes down here. Guys ran off with the money out of the till and cell phones from the two customers. You know, the news story says that the police are still looking for them. I don't think they really have a whole lot of leads in that particular case. Thankfully, none of the uh, people that were inside the store were harmed by this guy other than their egos and their stuff getting stolen. What the heck, man? Texas, why don't we see more Texans taking care of their business? I don't get it. They've got all the rights and sometimes they don't use them. Bah. I really do feel like we get another reminder here, Neil, that when these guys bust in, obviously as the defender, you're always at an initiative deficit. And so I don't care how fast you are with a gun right here, you're gonna have to wait your turn. Oh yeah, they've got the, they've got the guns out and they're ready to use them to force the issue. They've already presented them, they're already threatening lives. Uh, and so now you've gotta wait your turn and that's the thing, you've gotta survive that initial onslaught, wait your turn to, to get in the fight and do something about it. Now listen, when we talk about waiting your turn. This is a key to winning an armed robbery, right? If you don't wait your turn here and you decide, oh, I'm gonna start getting my gun out and I'm gonna get in an open gun battle with this guy, uh, these guys, you got two dudes here, one of which has a drum magazine in his gun, the other one has what looks to be a full-size gun. Uh, most people are carrying micro nines these days, man. You, you are giving yourself an expert level gunfight here. And I would prefer to wait my turn, gain the initiative, and have the, the gunfight that is not expert level. And so let's look for some opportunities to do that. The first one comes pretty quick. Watch the guy in the red here as he is going to run to the other side or walk and show his back to the first customer who is crouching down here because he's starting to get on the ground. If he has a two second draw to first shot here, he can get that gun in the fight, burn the first guy down here, stop him as a deadly threat, and then turn his attention to the guy in blue behind the counter. Well, you know, and John, what, what I think about people are gonna say is, well, he's already on his knees. Um, how, how can you get a two second draw to first shot? Well, from that position, all you literally have to do is straighten up your hips and draw the gun. So you probably need a little bit better than a two second because you've got that extra movement there. But man, if you've got a reliable uh, one five, one seven draw to first shot right here, uh, this this was the opportunity and you know because of the the fibs a factor and all of that kind of stuff uh you know these guys you, you shoot the one the other one isn't going to protect him the other one's leaving they're they're not hanging out to to cover each other's back uh they're in there to rob somebody and get what they can out of it for themselves so uh there was a real opportunity here and, and that would i would have loved to seen that take place right there and and listen you know, everybody gets different opportunities. You're gonna see the guy here in red. We're gonna talk about him as well. He is gonna then look and grab like the cell phone of this guy and then turn his back right on him. And you know, I know Neil that 
as firearms instructor, you know, you're a master level firearms instructor, but I don't think a whole lot of people work from the ground like this and drawing a firearm. Not too many places do and not very many classes do it because it's kind of dangerous. It's a little bit scary. It's something that most people haven't done much of. And in a group setting, it's it's always, uh, it, it, that's always a nerve wracking moment in a group setting because you've got a lot of other people laying down and I know I'm going to be safe, but I don't know about the guy next to me uh, and those kind of things. So most people don't get to practice this. This is something you can do in dry fire. You can do this in your living room uh, with, your, with your unloaded barrel blocked gun or a blue gun or whatever. You could get a feel for this. And I'm not saying that you have to practice every scenario out there, but practicing from the ground is never a bad idea. It's, uh, you know, it's not something that we see a ton of, but you know, there, there was an opportunity for this guy had he had a little bit of practice um, and could have done something about this. I do think that's a good reminder to get to gun school, right? So that you've, you've done some of this stuff. This is pretty advanced stuff. I do teach a class at the ASP National Conference every year that is talking about shooting from unconventional positions. This one is difficult to set up because of how individual it has to be. It has to be one student at a time for range safety rules. But knowing how to do that in that moment would maybe have protected this. I do wanna say one other thing. You heard the guy in blue. He beat the guy behind the counter up a little bit and, and did so pretty good. He, he muzzle punched him a couple times, threatened him, kicked him a time or two. And so he was fully compliant, but he wasn't fast enough and compliant enough. And, and I do think a lot of times people say, Neil, that, well, if you just comply, then they won't hurt you. But that's not always true. Dude, we see it all the time. And, and it's it's kind of a reoccurring theme in uh, in the comments and, and people that watch this kind of stuff is, I'm not going to risk my life for an $8 an hour job or for somebody else's Bud Light or whatever the case may be that's going on here. It's not That's not what you're risking your life for. These people have threatened your life. You're defending your own life and the life of the others there that are there that may be your loved ones, maybe your friends, maybe complete strangers but you are defending life. You're not defending property or money. And I think that's the thing that gets missed a lot. And, and that is why we do videos like this, to show where the opportunities were, to show, hey, listen, if you're paying attention, if you're armed and prepared, you've got your gun on your person, you know how to use it, you know what your times are, you're confident in your abilities, now you know what your go signals are to cover your ass.